had the most thought out of that. Yeah. Oh, Let's dance, my little honey bunny. 
Sunny Bay, hey B, and we will roll. We will dance. Muddy, 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 do a step and whirl about. Why, you boys, that you think out red hot. That's why. by the sun tone.
Ragtime came out, if, you, if the song didn't say Ragtime in it, you couldn't sell it. So Alexander's Ragtime Band, which is the biggest selling Ragtime song ever, it's not a Ragtime song, it's a march. <laughs> it says Alexander's Ragtime Band in it, you see? Uh, so, so we thought what we'd do is we'd do, we, we, we've been sort of interested in doing Ragtime uh, stuff, which is the same as Barbershop, it's just a little more jumpy, but it, uh, it's, it is, it's, it's the same, but this is, this is the first million seller song, of course, in sheet is like not in, in record, but it's, it's uh, yeah, I sold a million copies of this, you have Maple Leaf Red. So here it is. Come on, listen, the music's begun. Come on, listen, the time of fun, exciting, inviting. Seek a vision, intonation, it's the best thing the nation. Go away, man, I'll hypnotize the nation. Shake the earth's foundation with the maple leaf rag. Go away, man, just see with the syncopation. The concentration on the maple leaf rag. Feel the feeling, the feeling that can't be bent. You really love it. In your feet, so pa 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 to the maple leaf rag. Pa 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 Across the nation, you can hear that ragtime band. I jerk your motion, just try your hand. Do As incubation all across the nation, do what a great do sensation. Do that if you want to tap your feet to every brand new ragtime band. If you need me, really, and if we all believe, do the maple leaf rag. Exciting, inviting. You may think that this is easy, but in fact, I'm getting queasy. Oh, my. Singing all these words, kind of making me gag. Go away, man, there's really nothing to it. Do come around the end, become the maple leaf rag. Now you're at the end of the maple leaf rag. <laughs> Did he also write the words for that, or was that part of the words? words. Huh? Part of part the words. words. Earth the Shakers definitely is. Definitely. Ah. Some of those words are his. Oh, that's unfortunately, a lot of times when you, you do right time, in fact, we did uh, another, uh, we did uh, use this for a great lead in. Do you want to hear a song? We, we heard this song called Grandpa's Spells, <laughs> and it's this terrific. Uh, number, then it was done by Jelly Roll Morton. So we said, We have to do Jelly Roll, we have to do this song. So we looked all over, we spent months looking for the music, and we finally found it in New York <coughs> in a book. And the book cost 80 bucks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> so. I hope it was something else. Yeah, there was a lot of the stuff, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Grandpa Spell had no lyrics. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we said, well, hell of it, we'll write some, we'll write our own lyrics. So. Let's do it. We'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, so we wrote, So what we sort of did was we, 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 uh, well, we make a joke out of it, which we won't do now. But, in, but we said, gee, Grandpa spells, and my grandfather like used to drink a lot, so and uh, we kind of used that. But in fact, what it really turned out to be, a guy came up to us afterwards, uh, and this is sort of about grandfather's drinking, and uh, a guy came up and said, really, what he was talking about, Grandpa spells, was. Um, Gerald Morton's grandfather was into voodoo, but we are written the words. <laughs> <laughs> Our words, their music. Here right. Here's a little story about my grandpa's spells. When I was a little child, my grandpa used to drive me wild and he said, Now listen, boy, now listen, boy. if you want to be my pride and joy, just go downstairs and on the table there's a bottle. Read the label, it's whiskey, gin, or beer. Yeah, bring it here, you know. I got guns, eggs, and babies, and three I got this real bad hip on oh my hip. I can really use a little lip so let's dance between each other. Ba 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 
cement wells. Grab a spell, Columbia Powell, Don't make me I should a little me. What if someone should tell about he died? How about a dollar? Oh, Grandpa, I'll do it. Don't worry, nothing to it. Anything to help get you through the day of Grandpa's spells. Oh, bottoms up. Grandpa, should you have another oh, bottoms up? Tell me what you say to Mother. Don't you think you've had enough to keep from feeling bad? Oh, boy, I'll drink to that. Now we're going to tell you how this story ends. When my mom found what I'd done, she said to me, Now listen, son, you know this hurts me more than you. I'll tell you the truth. But you need my boom up like you do. That's okay, Daddy Gramps was happy. Bum, 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 me on the sly. What a guy, oh, what a guy. And you know what? That's how I cured Grandpa's spells. What a guy. Yeah, woo! We don't have the barbershop person. <laughs> 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 yeah, the 40s. Yeah, the 40s. Yeah, we can do that. We'll do it sort of in order. We'll sort of explain it. Oh, yeah. So the first thing is we do is that the, you know, the beginning of the century is the, uh, it's the barbershop. It's embarrassing that we didn't learn the barbershop. Well, we first. know, but it's got some. <laughs> well, they know <laughs> Shine Harvest They know Shine Harvest Moon. And this is the second section. This is the, the jazz section yeah. in the 20s. Some of us have to read the music. And we got help from this one, Dave Breiner. Yeah, Dave Breiner. Yeah, the did star this. trumpet part has to still cheat. Do I know what's happening? No. That's up here. That's for you, Yeah, here we, go. That's right. Right. we got we got a technical problem. Can I put on my stage manager hat? We 
we've got a bad background and we'd like to get some good pictures. Could we move you over? And can you guys move no, no, we don't want Please. to. Please. We're, we're getting lousy pictures. Can we go the yellow door? Yes. Maybe this side could, these guys can come over. That's good enough. Thank you very much. It's a process. 
It is. And well, and finding out what the quartet's all about, too. You know, I mean, well, I, I always had my ideas of what her third anniversary was when I stood on the outside and watched what they did. And um, not being in the quartet, not knowing how they work and how they come up with songs and all that, it's a whole new education. It, it, it answers a lot of questions for you, you know, when you're in another competing quartet and you go, God, how do they come up with this great material? Then you find out, and it's really neat. Yeah. You move feet, there must be a reason for it. Yeah, I've been standing on the end too long. Yeah. <laughs> no, there is a reason. There is a reason. And that is that uh, everybody, what they do is they stick the baritones and the tenors on the outside, so they're spear carriers on the outside. And all you hear is baritone, I mean, all you hear is lead and bass in most quartets and a couple other guys standing around. And it is very difficult to see baritones standing on the end. You can't, I mean, you can't tell when the cutoffs are, you can't blend, you know, when you're standing around and you're singing baritone, you can hear what's going on, and you can make things happen. When you're standing on the end, you can't make right. things happen. The only thing you make happen is what you learned in rehearsal, and hope that's what's going on on stage. Yeah. Yeah. You're on autopilot, yeah. It sounds great where you are. And, uh, and I, I mean, I think different quartets are different, but I mean, we're just, we just, you know. It's and we have right. tried other combinations of standing in other areas, I and mean, we've tried yeah. with me on the other end, being, uh, number three man, number two man, number one man, and you, you kick it around. It's it's different depending on every quartet. You know what you're singing with. Every song is singing too. Right? Well, right. sometimes we do that depending yeah. on who's doing what. Right. Doug does the melody on Grandpa's spell, so we put him up next to the mic so you can hear the melody. And and if you have a little bit bigger voice, there's no <coughs> sense in keeping you in the middle. If you're going to, even at your softest, you're going to bury somebody uh, when you don't mean to, but just it's the way your voice carries. It's it makes more sense to move right. around. I would say in general, I think that most baritone should be singing in the middle. I mean, not everybody goes, oh, I should be singing on the end, and stick them out on the end. And as a result, uh, it doesn't seem to me that there's many, very many wood shitting type baritones around. Because they don't ever get a chance to do it. They learn their part. Like, I don't learn my part. If somebody said, sing your part to any song that we do, I couldn't sing it. Oh. I, don't, I can't sing a linear part. Can't, I absolutely can't. If I sat <laughs> and thought of what the chords are, I thought about yeah. the chords. So because I grew up woodshed, Hank Grove and all these guys, you know. Well, being nice to sing that little song together, who makes the decisions on where the parts go and what song? Well, well, I think... Do you pick your own? What do you mean? I mean the uh, well, who's going to take has to pick up the arrangement once you decide oh, yeah. on the song. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. Doug does most of that. And, and whoever writes it down gets the last word, and we can argue up to the point where the guy who actually did the work <laughs> said, I did the work, I'll make the decision. <laughs> That's fair, right? Yeah. So, well, and you, and you may bring a song you know, into the quartet. I mean, there's songs that we're still kicking around that we don't know what we're going to do with them yet or what <coughs> we want to learn and stuff that it depends on who finds something, too. I mean, if you find yeah. a piece you think will work, you never know until... You know, you try it out on that combination and, and it may not work. And I think it's a, a problem that a lot of quartets fall into is wanting to do material that you've heard everybody else do because you like that song and it may not fit with your quartet. It may not fit with your voices, may not fit with your character, may not fit with your act. And uh, and you'll wonder why it really never goes over and then you have to say to yourself, gee, you know, I don't know, Ma, she's making eyes at me. It was great for the gentleman's agreement. Why isn't it working for us? Uh, well, sometimes look at who's singing, you know. There was an article in an Old Harmonizer a long time ago about talking about how songs should be like um, uh, sport competitors' jerseys that they retire. Because a guy was at the convention when the Orioles War gave up singing as a quartet the last time they performed, and they did Danny Boy. And it was their arrangement, they'd done it in contests, and since then it was going to get disqualified because it was not a contest legal arrangement. They had about the eighth time had decided that you couldn't sing it. And uh, so in doing that, these guys went out and sang it, and this guy said to himself, that's it. To me, that is the epitome of that song, and anybody that tries to you know, live up to those expectations of that arrangement done by that quartet and try to sing it better, you might as well just take that one and go pin it on a wall and say, Danny Boy, Royal Four, best there ever was, and don't try and be that quartet. You know, that's, that's where original material yeah. comes in. You didn't, you didn't think that Semtone version was better. <laughs> well, what? I, I like the semitone. Yeah, well, one. different. I mean, yeah, no, it's different, different though. I mean, it's different yeah. range. I mean, it's like us singing, you know, <laughs> it's like us singing Mother McCree. It's a great song and it hasn't yeah, been done in umpteen years. And usually there's a reason for that. You know, there, I think there's plenty of quartets that have tried songs and if they're honest with themselves, it doesn't work or they have that quest to find original stuff to where you don't stand backstage and 
you meet up with the quartet, and, hey, we're in Thrash, you know, hi, we're the Sump Pump 3, you know, and hey, how you doing? Great, what are you guys singing tonight? Oh, we're doing uh, da 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 and they read off your whole song list. <laughs> you know, and they're on before you, and they're the third place novice quartet, and but they're gonna sing all your stuff, <coughs> you know? And, and I speak from experience from having having done that once with the Grand Tradition. Well, we so were, we were, we were seeing other people's that's material right. in the first place. <laughs> we were in our Boston Common <laughs> mode for a couple of years where we wanted to do everything that they did, you know? So we learned a bunch of their stuff and we were doing a show up in San Jose. And it happened that the Boston Common was on the show and there was a Sweet Adeline regional champ that was on the show. And we were in between the two of them on the show. So we're backstage and it's like, well, you know, all of a sudden, one of the guys gets a brilliant idea. Hey, maybe we should ask these other groups what they're singing. Hey, good idea. Walk up with our list. Uh, can we compare notes, you know? Yeah, sure. Well, what are you guys singing? Well, we're opening up with Cinderella. And this is Sweet Adeline Quartet. They're going to do Cinderella. That's our opener. Oh, oh, yeah. Now, they're on before us, right? And they are a higher ranking quartet than we are. So it's like, oh, OK, well, there's no problem there. Well, what else are you guys doing? Uh, every Street's a Boulevard in Old New York. Oh, okay. <laughs> Roll the list over a little more, and we're making check marks on them. Then we're like, we get back in the hallway, our, our eight songs are now four. So now we go for the common. Uh, you guys doing uh, any of these? Yeah, those are our first four out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the dressing room. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> we sang Sweet and Lovely. <laughs> We sang Sweet and Lovely. We sang, we sang Down Our Way with a Pattern. And this is District Champ Quartet, right? And here we are dying on this show. And, and the common, man, they were dying laughing. And you know what they did? They didn't sing. Oh. They didn't sing those four. And they, did, and they did that for a reason. We walked off stage, man, just dragging it. Walked into the wings and went, that's it, forget it. And they walked around and we see them go out and they're going, hey guys, boy, when you're ringing that move, while our shows. <laughs> we go out and do it, they go out and do their thing. They don't sing any one of these songs. So we're in the wings going, you, you know? And Terry Clark just said, honestly, to us, he says, hey, you guys are young, uh, you're known around this district, and you don't need to be doing our stuff. You know, we're old guys that stand here in tuxedos, and that's all we do. And these are our tunes, and we found them, and we had them arranged for us. So why don't you do that? Well, that really hurt us. You know, these were our idols. You know, I mean, it's like, how dare the Boston Common tell us we can't sing their songs? We love these guys. Well, now we hated them. <laughs> <laughs> so we made it. We made it a pact that between then and the next year's international, we would learn as many new songs as we could. And within nine months, we learned about 19 new songs. <laughs> we dumped all of our Boston Common stuff completely, except for First Hello, because it really wasn't their song anyway. And uh, it was the Four tag. Rascals tune yeah. from back, and the Happiness yeah. Emporium did it, and, and it we did it with the up tag, and the vocal majority wanted to buy the tag from us, and all that stuff. So they gave us the they gave us that tune. But you know that was a, a great lesson, because yeah. you know it, it just pointed out to us that when we had our own stuff to sing, we didn't have to worry about that anymore. So, so they come in with a list of anything they wanted, and there was not going to be a duplicate on it, and we were going to have to see some other quartet try and dredge up a performance that would be equal to a quartet that they're on the show with, or who was just on the show last year, and everyone's going to remember it. Last, last year we went to, when we were international, the lead of uh, Gas House Games, <laughs> changing his clothes in our dressing They play second. They play second, the right? And, and uh, so uh, I, I had, had talked to the bass, and I asked them what they were singing. And so <laughs> they were singing the Bowery Boys medley, which was Doug's arrangement that we did in 1977 or something, and uh, and something I forget what the other one was, and so uh, Jimmy says uh, says to him, and he said to us, you know, what are you guys singing tonight? So of course I, I said, or he, somebody said, well we're singing uh, Bowery Boys medley, and so, 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 <laughs> but and when we didn't <laughs> ask them what they were doing because I knew they were going to do the Bowery Boy medley because they had on their Bowery Boy well, outfits, yeah, yeah, they yeah, always do. Uh, uh, Oh. Anyhow, he says, yeah, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people sing our stuff. And so he <laughs> almost killed him. So what do you mean, your stuff, that's our stuff? Oh, no, I'm sorry. So he didn't even know. Ago, yeah. Yeah. He didn't even, know, know, he didn't even know where their hit song came from. Yeah. Did they wow. sing it or did yeah. you? Yeah, they did. Well, they sang no, it. We, yeah. 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 we haven't sung it for years. Yeah. You know, an interesting thing, too, that I noticed from, from being outside this quartet. He's only four when we yeah. did it, you know, let's be fair. Um, from watching this quartet and, and competing against them, it's interesting to see things happen in barbershop because it, it's, I used to do a traveling little music show thing and I'd bring in slides and then videotapes and stuff and, and, and tapes of uh, trying to go back in time of where the first 
base pickup of a, a bum with a hand move came from and who was the first baritone tiddly guy who threw one in and everybody looked at him like where'd that come from and uh, it's interesting to look at this quartet and look back through old harmonizers which is a, a fun thing to get the convention issues if you got them way back um, and look at the pictures of quartets and if you notice quartets that really do make a change on the society are quartets that everybody else are wannabes. They, they want to be like this quartet, they want to be like that quartet or chorus. And it was interesting watching Hunter and Eshi one year came out with these brown tweed pants and long sleeve shirts and brown elastic suspenders and brown caps and big platform shoes which were in style. And uh, they came out with these outfits and sang like Bowery Boy and all these different things. And the next year it was interesting to look through the harmonizer and look at all the quartets that went out and got brown pants and, and, and hats just like that, <laughs> including, and, including and the grand tradition. tradition. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we went out and got knickers too. We had knickers, you know, to try to look like we had the caps. And if you look at the songs, there's at least one tune in each one of those quartets that they stole, and they stole off the record, and they're singing parts that aren't close to the ones that were put on paper, which is the other fault in doing that. That you sing something and someone and the pit says, Gee, where, where'd you get the music at to that? Because I think there were some wrong chords in there. Oh, well, we, uh, you know, well, he had the music, you know. Then you look at it and you compare it, because I collect sheet music, and comparing their arrangements with stuff that people have taken off the records is one of the funniest things in the world. Because a guy's sitting there at home with his headphones on him. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's the baritone note. And he writes some ludicrous part that no one can sing. What <laughs> guy? <laughs> you know, it's like all over the papers, aren't you? <laughs> Wait a minute, that's what we do. That's right. <laughs> But theirs makes sense, and then when these guys sing it in contests and they get nailed because the chords don't fit and this is wrong, or they, but they're wannabes, you know, it's like, oh, we want to sing that stuff. It really is a good lesson to do that, just to go up and say, hey, there's plenty of arrangers out there, and you have four brains working in a quartet anyway, is to decide what you want to be from the get-go. I mean, I can speak for these three guys, because even though I've been here a year and a half with them, I still feel like I'm majorly new with them, but having admired what they do, it's... It's a great thing to go out and, and, and not, not stray from what you said the plan's going to be, you know? What do you well, mean? well, I mean, this is what the style of quartet is going to be, this is the style of music, this is the style of dress, and this is what we put across to the audience, and that has stayed consistent. You know, if you look at the Boston Common, they did the same thing every year, and people said, don't you ever want to win? Well, that can be an end all to some quartets if that's not really what you want. But yeah, we would like to, but it also spells out, hey, that's the end of the line for most quartets. There's not many quartets that last past five years after winning. You know, it just it just takes its toll on you. You know, even though you've won and it's great, that's really when, you know, a big amount of the shows happen and then it's more rehearsal to stay on top. And uh, people say the AIC show is not a contest, but it is, speaking from experience, it is because you've got the quartets that even though your brother's in harmony backstage and hey, good luck guys, go out there and tear them up. They want you to die out there. They, they really do. It's more fun. I, I've always wanted to take a video camera and do my own documentary of the society and its contest experience and follow quartets around and know where they're gonna hang out and know who to talk to and, and where to get the hubbub on and play that for the society sometime. Because it's a real experience to see the bluegrass come off stage when they clean house on an AIC show, they're not happy with their performance and they think they died out there and didn't do a great job and it's going to affect record sales. You know? Really. And watching that happen is really great. And then you can go out there as your quartet and just say, hey, we're going to go sing and do something funny and we'll s still have the same following, we'll still have the same amount of sales and consistency. You know? That's, that's a real key thing. And these guys have done that. I mean, that's, that's really neat. Uh, you know, I, I think what would be a really fun video would be backstage at International at the time that they call off the wings. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta tell you, we've had 18 years of, of this moments of hell. <laughs> That's right. Not for us. Uh, uh, well, experiencing it for everyone. Watching the other yes. nine is great. Yeah. If you are second, there's a lot of pressure on you to win. Yeah. If you're Ninth, there's a lot of pressure to meddle. Uh, any way you look at it, there is there's pressure there. And uh, one of the there was a video taken. Well, many of you have probably seen the one in 1973 when yeah. the Pacific Airs. Yeah.
The BBC followed them through the convention, and they were expected to win. And the surprise quartet called the Dealer's Choice came out of nowhere. And uh, right as they're announcing the second place quartet, the Pacific Airs are there. Of course, the com commentator is going, okay, this is the moment, ladies and gentlemen. The moment that they've been waiting for. If they get past this one, then they know they've won and they're going to be champions. And they call off, and second place, the Pacific Airs! <laughs> and Bill Fritz goes, and they freeze the frame, right? <laughs> what a great production. Like that. Oh, God. Well, in, in I think he, he should have sued for that. <laughs> And then what was the, <laughs> speaking of the, one to beat the 73 one was, what was like the epitome of like really being hammered down that you were second, was if you ever see any of the Pacific Airs, ask them to see their 73 medals. Because on the back of it, there's no city on it. It was the only medal that didn't have a city <laughs> printed on it. And they said, good, because we don't want to remember what that is. <laughs> it's true, it's the only one like that. The, the 85 convention, when, when we won, because if you ever go rent the 85 tape of them announcing the top 10, it's another great one watching center stage, who are, if I'm the, if I'm the camera and I'm focused on them, they're standing like right about here and the stage is out there and the audience is out that way. And they're in a huddle. But they were second the year before. They are second the last and they were expecting three years in a row, yeah. right? And yeah. they were expecting to win because they got Drayton Justice to sing with them and kicked out their old lead and, and he was going to do it for them. Sure thing. So they're right up by the thing, and we're hanging out with her through Nashville. A couple of us are we're sitting in our punk table rock outfits. And these guys are in there, <laughs> and they're in Marx Brothers outfits. Mark yeah. Brothers. Yeah. We're back looking at Johnny, Johnny Sherber, and I are back looking at the medals and the trophies on a table that's way back over here in the corner. And a couple of the other guys are talking to these guys, and they've announced third, and then they announced second as vaudeville. And then we're kind of looking, and these guys are about where your camera guy is. They're standing in a circle. Oh, and wait a minute. As they, when they announced second, then I turned over to the base of, of center stage and I said, well, looks like it's either you or us. <laughs> and he goes, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to nail the crowd and, and see everybody stand up in the place, and we did. So we'd done what we came to do. We were seventh year before, and if we didn't make the medals, it was no big deal, truly. And uh, we see these guys, and if you watch the video, and they say, and your new international champions, Harpo, Chico, <laughs> And then the rest of the new, and about that time, if you throw it on slow-mo, you'll see, I'm the cameras on, on the back of Glenn Van Tassel, who's in a huddle. And slow-mo, the hands come down. He turns around with the gum that he always chews. The camera's now come as, coming real close focus because we're running past them, okay? And just as the bodies peel past the last guy, you see him go. <laughs> picture on you know and we died man we played that backwards and forth on <laughs> over and over again <laughs> yes <laughs> and i mean it's great because then we have the video that shows we had a video that international gave us that we spliced to that one because as soon as that's done we splice the four of us running on and it was two and then two because we kind of got caught in the crowd backstage but it's great to see that and then see the, the immediate front angle of it with the rap stallions standing there holding the medal doing that. But those are things you don't forget. You know, I mean, you're, you're standing there doing that. And uh, Grandma's boys, when they won in 79, they were so high keyed about winning, they didn't want anybody to say, hey, you'd won. And especially Don Barney, who was really <coughs> nervous. And I remember it was in the same auditorium. And <laughs> there was this big black runner on the stage going all the way behind the curtain to keep the, the, the foot noise down. And they're in their toy soldier outfits, and he's standing there, and he's just kind of going like this back and forth. And he's just meditating, and he's by himself, and everybody can sense, get away from him, you know, don't, don't even talk to him. And some new guy who had made the top ten for the first time that year, who was just, you know, man, I'm slap happy to be here, walks up behind him and says, well, you guys must have won. And when he did that, this body went like on, you know, overload, you know, and he went, don't say that! You know? And everybody backstage goes, you know, like, you know, and then he went, Bruh, shook himself down and kind of stood there, and then you hear, Grandma's boys! And it was like, talk about program that you're like there to do something and that's it. As soon as he heard their name, they all went into this, 
parade stance of the, the Toy Soldier Quartet and all did one of these all over from the backstage oh. out. <laughs> you know, it was perfect. It was like, whoa, that's too, mm. <laughs> that's too tight for me, you know. <laughs> it, it's fun just to, 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 I mean, like this year hanging out with the guys, it was hard to realize that I hadn't competed international in seven years. And it kind of comes toppling down on you when you're standing back there, like Jimmy says, when it's the announcement of the, of the top five. Always hell. There, there's always that feeling that you say to yourself, if, you, if you've been a medalist the year before, what goes through your head is you want to move up, but you don't care as long as they announce your name. Yeah. It really it changes that quick. You know, it's like, oh, we've got to be third. We've got to be third. Fifth place, third place. Yes, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that quick because you don't... <laughs> You don't want to be six. You know, you really don't. I mean, when it comes down to it, you don't want to be six. And uh, how many times, Doug, have you been six? Oh, five, five, five times. Five times. Been six five times. He's got like probably 30 points keeping him from having five more medals. And uh, when you hear that, the, the grand tradition one year, it's a, the funny thing when you look at little trivia things that happen. The first year we, the second year we competed international, we popped up in the fourth place. We were out of our minds. We went totally nuts. Jumping around, hey, we're fourth place medalists, we're calling everybody the whole bit. The next year we don't compete because our base had mononucleosis. Yeah. We didn't make the cut to Detroit. So we sent it home, we made a record, and we said, well, let's come back and do something. We won the prelims the next year. And the quartet that gave us our medals in 1980 was the Happiness Emporium. And about three months before the International, they were on the Crescent Valley show at my old chapter. And uh, I sang with them in the basement, and I said, boy, you know, those medals, oh, sure, well, I'd love to have one of those someday. And they said, well, who knows? Maybe we'll be hanging one around your neck soon. Yeah, that'd be great. Three months later, boom, they hang a fourth place medal on me. It's great. Now we come back in 82, and we're backstage. It's all over with, and we're waiting for the announcements, and we see the happiness in Porian. So we walk over, and we said, hey, what, what medals are you guys giving out this year? They pick them up, and they go, oh, we're, we're giving out fourth. We went, ooh, you know, get near us. You know, we don't want one of those, you know. We want a fifth or a third or second. We don't want another fourth. Well, they announced your fourth place medalist will be presented by the Happiness Emporium. Here they are, the grand tradition. We looked at each other and go, oh, geez, they're on their fourth again. You know, okay, we've lost no, no place, but we're right where we're at. Come back in 83, and this was like the do or die year. You know, you've been together for six years, and you haven't moved up, you're right there. We stand backstage, and Bob Gray, he, he was standing back there, he looked at the other three of us, and he goes right over to the stairwell that goes up to the stage and stood there after they'd announced fifth. We said, what are you he said, we said, what are you doing? He says, we're fourth. We're fourth. <laughs> so we're going, ah, ah, come on, don't jinx it, man. Get over here. Stand with the quartet. You know, let's hold hands or something, you know. <laughs> so we look over, and here comes the Happiness Emporium. They walk by the table, and this, now I didn't know how they did this until I got in the AIC. But they walk by the table, and the guy that's the representative for the society hands them the four medals. And our eyes were now like about the size of saucers going, eh! and they walked by us and they were going dangling them like this. <laughs> and we're looking like, ah, ah, ah. And then we're thinking, hey, we could be six, okay? So, you know, now keep in mind that thing of like, you just want to hear your name announced. That was great the year before, but in 83, they now announced, so now your fourth place medals, having this important, we'll give them out. Bob's still over by the stairwell. Three of us are 30 feet away, stand there. Grand tradition. He turns around. Bob, our own baritone, looks at us and goes, told you. Goes up the stairs. And, and on the video I've got, he's out there 20, pa 20 paces before the rest of us are. And he's standing like this, waiting for the medal. And you see the three of us walking on going, kind of a Jerry Lewis stumble, right? And here's the Happiness Emporium waiting with the medals. And the lead puts it around my neck, Rod Johnson, and he hangs around my neck and he goes, hey, we meet again. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, you know what, now this is not, you know, the, the audience doesn't hear any of this, right? But it looks like everybody's all happy and, you know, wow, and they're putting the metal around your neck. I'd love to have the, the hidden mics because it's like the football games where you don't hear yeah. what the guys say. Because he says, wow, hey, we meet again. I said, hey, this shit's got to stop. <laughs> and he says, well, how many you got of those now? And I said, three. And I said, they, they were occurring this whole conversation. And he says, I said, what place are you guys hand out next year? And he says, well, we'll make sure it's fourth. How's that? <laughs> so in, in 84, the grand tradition had broke up, new tradition. We, it was the first year we competed. We walked backstage, and the first thing that Bob and I did, we looked for the happiness emporium. And we saw them stand there, and they're holding medals on their fingers, right? And we're going, yes, we're fourth, yes, you know, it's like, it's in. You know, what place are you guys giving out? And they went, uh, fifth, fifth. 
And it was like, you see these two bodies kind of creeping away like sick-like, you know? We didn't meddle, you know? So we blamed it on them, wrote them a big letter and this whole big thing saying, hey, thanks a lot, you jerks, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And we signed it with every member that's ever been in our quartets, you know, and, and sent it off to them. But, uh, so whenever you see those little things from the, the screen, they may look like so much fun, you know, you're in the back of your head. All we wanted in, in 84 was, just, again, you've been a medalist, you don't want to be seventh or eighth. You want to stay there, you know, it doesn't matter what color it is at that point. I, wanna, I was going to Hey, well, wait a minute. Didn't they hand out our fourth place medal last year? <laughs> yeah, I think they did. <laughs> yeah, because they make fun of me now that Sherburn called me up the day we got home and uh, he says, Hey, how you doing? I said, Pretty good. And he says, Hey, congratulations. I want to be the first one to congratulate you guys. I said, Oh, well, thanks. He says, Well, actually, I want to congratulate you. You're the only guy that has four fourth place medals. <laughs> And I said, yeah, well, I appreciate that. I said, how many do you have fourth place? He says, none. And then I hung up the phone. So, <laughs> a two, one, two, three, and a five. So if he wants to rent one out, he can, he can do that. But, uh, I was going to ask about the Detroit uh, convention there. Uh, that was a year I thought we were going to get maybe four quartets in the top ten. Maybe a winner, or maybe yeah. two in the top five, and two in the end. It was end. a disaster year. Because you fellas yeah. didn't compete. And you were following well, out the Mona. Well, they competed. No, we did. They were like seventh. Well, well, you were second the year before. Have I got the wrong convention? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're thinking of Cincinnati in '78. Yeah. 70, okay. '78. So you were eight. second the one year. When the was no, when the uh, uh, bluegrass won. Oh. It was a year they didn't. And we didn't compete you didn't that compete. year. We were right. second the year before that, and then yeah. we lost our lead. I never heard the story on that. Is you it a dead horse? No, it's it's. Uh, <clears throat> Well, you, can you make it short? I can make it short. We did a song, it actually was like uh, Doug's third arrangement. Don't that, put attacks. Don't put attacks on the beautiful girls. <laughs> and uh, he researched it, went down to the library in, in uh, UCLA, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, along with Jim Meehan, and, and they picked out, and you, right? Did you go to? And they picked out a song, and uh, yeah, great words. Uh, it was a song that came out same year that um, income tax. Well, we were going to sing that this year. We don't have time to stop this, so we're familiar with the song. Yeah, so it was Don't Put a Tax on the Beautiful Girls, How Can I Live Without Love. Uh, we added a few words, but mainly we changed a lot of melody notes because it was a really strange melody. And, uh, you know, in those times, melodies and tunes were done in a rather prolific manner, and they would pump, composers would pump out four or five a week, and they were called tunes because they would come in the in the mail, and uh, and at the barber shops where they would have a piano, they would sit and they would you know play the, the tunes, and they would. Um, this was the big happening, I guess, for the week in the town, and uh, so a lot of them didn't. A lot of those songs didn't have a lot of pre thought as far as the melody lines and how you could harmonize to them. They were just tunes, so Doug doctored the melody line so that it would enhance and make the make the harmonics easier. And it really worked very well. It's a song, of course, nobody had ever heard of the song. It's a very obscure song, and we didn't really worry about it. And I don't think he even knew that you couldn't no, change the... We're very, very ignorant of the fact you can't, you can't alter... Now they're a lot more limited. Back then was... Well, we, we've had a lot to do with why now everybody knows that you can't do that. Um. <laughs> 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 oh, what a legacy! Yeah. 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 You know, I hear some of the classics, so-called classics, go back to original <coughs> sheet music. And yeah. Boy, they aren't yeah. anything. Like Shout out Harvest Moon. What are the what are the words of Shout out Harvest Moon? I ain't had no loving since. What are they? January. 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 Wrong. The real words are January, April, and <laughs> oh, <right>. June. Right. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Those are real words. Yeah. So, so everybody knows. It. So nobody thought about it. We thought it was a great arrangement, and we went in. Of course, we were surprised to come in second at the uh, 77 convention. It was just a complete shock to us. And that was one that we put on the album. And there was uh, a judge from Ohio. His, his name is Jack Baird. And he was going to be judging the following year and uh, in arrangements. And he had done quite a bit of studying of songs of that era. And it didn't quite sound right to him. The melody line did not really follow the usual patterns of melody from that, that uh, era. And of course, he was right. Well, it took him six months. It, when, as soon as he heard the recording, it bothered him. But he couldn't find the sheet music. It's that obscure. 
I would think a guy that you know had written a thesis on music of that era would be able to you know find a, you know any song from that era. But it was that obscure, and he did find it. He compared the melody notes that we sang on the recording with the sheet music, and of course he found out that uh, you know what we had done. We had changed several. The short version. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, he wrote us a letter and said, in all good conscience, in, in all good conscience. I must disqualify you from the contest if you do it. And I'm writing you two months ahead of the contest so that you, it will, will not be a big surprise for you. So if you could just not do that song, then you won't have to worry about disqualification. And he was a little, it was a little strange. And so we wrote him back and said, wait a minute. You know, it ain't, yeah, it, it ain't that important, you know. Don't worry about it. This is a really obscure song. and Just let us do our art, you know. Don't disqualify us, but you can penalize us. It's, it's okay. And a uh, big fight, big fight. He wrote back a scathing letter to us. And uh, Quartet took a vote and decided not to go to the contest as a, you know, as a boycott. And the boycott continued. Finally, the other judges found out that we weren't going and got in on the, uh, the problem and talked to Jack Baird, talked to us, and got him to back down from his position. And so then we thought, hey, okay, now we can go. Except Jim, our lead, then had so been uh, alienated by the, the whole situation that he says, "Wait a minute, guys! If you go to the contest, then you, you know you're going to go without me because you know, I, I quit. I can't do it." And he, for the principle of that, um, he quit and he meant it. And so we um, we lost a great lead. Yeah, sure did. Lost a great lead. <coughs> Jimmy. And but Jack we're going to see him. Judge a contest for about fifty years. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's right. Well, we sang it year after that. We sang it. Yeah, we sang it. It was no big deal. It was no big deal. Um, so I mean, it's just weird that he's made some sort of point of honor. Well, but the thing is, uh, Jim moved like a year later to go up to, Sa to Sacramento as a lobbyist for the gas company. So if we had won that year, we would have been kaput after another year anyway. So it's it's funny how things happen. <laughs> And we'll see him in about three weeks, so I'll say hello for you guys. <laughs> he's, he's gonna, in fact, I'm going up early, and he's going to yeah. host my family and take me around, you know, and show the kids uh, Sacrament and everything. So we've, we've all maintained the friendship. Yeah. Yeah. He's not singing with anybody. He's not singing with anybody right now. Do you guys have any quartets? Do you guys have quartets? Anything going on here? Or are we just supposed to? What? Who's running this? Go. Right. Any more questions? Um, Interesting. How about if we take like about five, ten minutes? People have to go to the bathroom uh, or wash the brain. We'll come back in about ten minutes and, and more questions if you want. Uh, quartet sing if you want to sing a couple songs. We're happy to woodshed with anybody. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Any song you that guys know. Okay, so We're come back in about say ten after and we'll continue for another, I don't know, half hour, forty five minutes, whatever, and, and then close up. Let me tell you what John is. <laughs> he asked he asked we be sad before we start. <laughs> oh there's the lead. Breath was down to my ankle. Okay. <laughs> Thanks guys. You're old. Just hold my calls, clear the track, Lulu's coming back. So tell me where's that careless chambermaid, where she put my razor blade? She mislaid it, I'm afraid, it's gotta be found. Ask her when she cleaned my room, what she did with my perfume. Shoes and shine my hair, got to get myself a food and yeah, Lulu's back in town. In town, you can tell all my pets, all the pretty, pretty coquettes, Mr. Honest regrets that he won't be around. You can tell the mailman not to call, I come 
coming home until the fall, and I might not get back home at all. Lulu's back in town. I'm the Yukon Jack.
Finally, I think we got the song, and it's a, it's a, <coughs> it's close. Yubi Blake, it's close. This is a Yubi Blake song. It's, it's another ragtime song. But I hope you guys like doing ragtime because that's yeah. what we're interested in. And what the hell, we're not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, do, 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 Sorry. <coughs> Does anybody What's have any? All these ragtime oh, songs are all the same. <laughs> oh. uh, after we're done tonight, ask Jimmy about his experiences of playing drums. Just, you know. So. <laughs> You'll laugh a lot right, later okay, when you ask me about that. I got kicked out of fourth grade band playing drums. Oh. <laughs> Get out. Uh, I got it. No rhythm. rhythm. Oh, I got it. I made it through the Christmas concert, but after that they brought out music. <laughs> now there's just one fellow for her in this world. Harry's his name, that's what you claim. Harry's her maid by some kindness of fate. Even today you'll still hear her say, Oh, I wild about Harry, and Harry's wild about me. The happy blisses of his kisses fill her with ecstasy. He's sweet just like chocolate candy, and just like honey from the bee. Oh, I'm just wild about Harry, and he's just wild about Harry. He's just wild about me, she says I'm just wild about Harry, and Harry's wild about me. She says he's sweet just like chocolate candy, and just like honey from the bee. Oh, I'm just wild about Harry. And he's just wild about me. She says he's wild about do 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 me. Saxophone Quartet. Really? Adapted yeah. by Larry Wright. Huh. So we'll, we'll do a tag. I mean, who wants to sing? Would somebody like to sing a song? Come on. Nice chance. Does anybody know Box Fugue in D minor? No. Yeah. <laughs> Anything. Come up and sing. Like, Anything. Anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's your pleasure? Um, Stay in the middle. Don't it can be anything. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we'll do Bob Ortel's favorite song, Sweet and Lovely. Oh, oh I wish you were here to hear it. Put him in the middle. Do you want to go to the middle? Okay. Don't kid. I don't know either. Come on, you mean You mean you don't have a barber bowl cap, man? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, we had the second edition. Hey, make this a tag quartet. It's a tag quartet. Now you know why this quartet has never won. But anyway, okay. What is the woodshed? What bitch is he doing? Is it him? Yes. Oh, close enough. Close enough. Last night alone on our way home, you turned and said to me, to me. Okay. I love you so. Thank you.